Hey, what's going on, guys? And welcome to FameMasterVideos.com, taking barbers to the next level. Today, I'll be showing you guys how to do a fade with a number one on the sides and scissors on top. So, as usual, you want to put on the next strip. Half of it goes under the cape, and the other half goes over the cape. This is to protect the client's clothing and for sanitation also. Like always, I want to go over my clippers really quick. I use a pair of wall seniors. I keep these the same way they come from the store and I use all the guards for it. From the half guard all the way to the number 12. I use the Andes Masters. I got these set up to cut closer in one of my videos. I show you guys how to do this a step by step, how to set them up to cut closer. And for these, I have only three guards. The 00, zero which I call it the number one because it cuts just a little bit lower than the number one from the walls. The number zero, which cuts just a little bit lower from the number two from the walls. So we call it at the shop the number two. And the zero A, which cuts just a little lower than the number three from the walls and we call it the number three. I use two pairs of T liners. One, I adjusted them to cut closer. In one of my other videos, I show you guys step by step how to do that. I use these to get out the line from the wall shavers or to fade out the line from the blade if I use the blade to do a ball fade. I use the T-outliners. I keep this set up the same way they come from the store. I use this for little kids and also to do the back of the neck on clients. And I have the wall detailers, which I use them as my backup pair and they're pretty good for edging. And um, I just keep the blades the same way they come from the store. The shavers that I use are the wall shavers. I tried the Norelco's before and uh, pretty much most brands out there. Um, they work good as well. The, what I like about these the best is that the foil on all of them eventually is gonna break. So you're gonna have to buy a new one. And on these, the foil is pretty inexpensive. For scissors, I use this pair right here. They're pretty good. Um, you don't have to buy some scissors that are very expensive. These were only about $70, so this do the job. For thinning shears, I use the ones that are 40 teeth. You want the ones that are 40 teeth because when you're working with short hair, these will blend it the best. And um, is it a blade, of course, and two brushes. I'm going to do the size first. I'm gonna start with the Andes Masters with the number one set up on low. Remember, on the guard, it says zero, zero. These are the speedo guide guards, and at the barbershop we call it number one. As I'm cutting, I'm bringing the clippers out in a circular motion to blend the hair already. I'm not just doing this right here. See, I'm going like this. To fade it out as I'm cutting. Remember to always keep your client clean. Don't let them get full of hair. Now I'm going to use the Andes Masters with the number zero guard set up on low. And remember guys, when you're cutting, bring the clippers out in a circular motion as you're cutting to blend it out. Now I'm going to use the wall seniors with the number one guard set up on low. Remember guys, this is low, this is high. The reason that I have two pairs of clippers is because it makes my life easier. It makes it easier for me to blend the lines. The number that goes between this guard, the number one guard, or a zero zero like it says on the guard, and the number zero is this number one. So it makes it easier for me to fade those lines out. All right? It makes it easier to fill in the gap between this guard and this guard. By the way, I'm not being sponsored by any clipper company out there, so I'm recommending the tools that I personally use 
and that I feel are the best for the job. I'm going to pass the wall seniors with the number one guard set on high with the lever back. Notice that I'm bringing the number one and a half lower than where I brought the number two with the Andes Masters. I brought the number two guard up to right here. So I'm bringing the one and a half up to right here. You don't wanna go higher because then it's gonna make more work for you. You're gonna have to bring everything up higher. You want to check your work by looking into the mirror to see the haircut from a different perspective. Now, I always recommend my barbers and my students to do one half of the head and then the other half. The reason I recommend this is because after you do one half of the head, you can show the customer to see if that's how he likes it. So, especially when you're working with a new client and you don't know exactly how they want their haircut, if you show them the mirror right away, you already know they like it and then you're good. You just do the same thing on the other side. But let's say the client says, oh, I want it a little lower. Now I just have to go back and make this, this side shorter. And then for the other side, I already know how he likes it. All right, so I think it saves you a lot of time, especially when you're dealing with a new customer. If you just do one side of the head first and show them the mirror. Now for the right side, we're going to take the same steps that we did on the left side. With the Andes Masters, with the guard 00, zero set up on low. Remember guys, to bring the clippers out in a circular motion to fade out the line. I'm going to use the number zero with the Andes Masters set up on low. Notice how high I'm bringing the number two guard and how high I'm gonna bring the number one in a minute. I'm going to be using the number one guard with the wall seniors. Remember to cut in a circular motion and it's all in the wrist, all right? I am setting the number one guard on high. Notice that right now it's just cutting a little bit and sometimes that's all you needed to do to get a perfect blend. And keep in mind that I'm keeping the number one and a half lower than the low number two. I'm going to use the number zero A or low number three with the Andes Masters set up on low. Whether you copy my same steps or you come up with your own, you always want to follow your same steps. That way you're not all over the place and it's gonna help you a lot with your speed. You don't wanna be all over the place and not know what your next step is, all right? So be organized with your steps. So the number three. Now we're going to use the number zero. We're gonna keep the number two guard lower than how high we brought the number three. All right, now we're going to pass the number two guard. Like I said before guys, these are the Speedo Guy guards. And this one, I call it the number two, but on the guard, it says number zero. We're going to do the top. So this is how you hold the scissors. The ring finger here, the pinky here, the thumb here. Okay, see it? Now, you're going to hold the hair at about a 120 degree angle to make the front just a little bit longer. And then, you're going to use that guide and bring it up to a 90 degree angle. You want to comb the hair with enough pressure to keep all the hair straight. So you want to comb it and hold it in a 90 degree angle. See the guy right there? That's the hairs that I already cut. And now I just cut the new section. See the hairs that I already cut? And just cut the new guys. And you wanna part the hair in about a quarter inch to a half an inch. 
I spray a little bit more water. This is where I have my section. Now I'm going to do the left side, the front, same way, at about a 120 degree angle to leave the hair just a little bit longer. Then the second section, combing a 90 degree angle. Make sure you don't lose your guide, guys. At first, it might be a little hard, but then as you try this more and more, it'll become easier and easier for you. So be a little patient. Want a little bit lower? Yes, please. Right. Here, I'm bringing the top shorter to keep the customer happy. And now, I'm just gonna cut a little bit more. Same steps. The more you practice this, the easier and easier it's going to become. So if you don't get it right the first time, don't get frustrated. Just have a little bit of patience with yourself. You'll get it. Notice that I'm combing with the same hand that I hold my scissors. That's the same hand that I'm combing with. Now I'm going to the left side. Notice that for this client, he likes his haircut to be a little squarish. So when I'm cutting here in the corners, I'm gonna hold my fingers, I'm gonna keep them like this, I'm gonna keep them straight. So for the sides, I'm holding the hair in a 90 degree angle to the side. You want to stand behind the client, make sure it's right. In the back, we're going to do the same thing. Hold the hair in a 90 degree angle against the scalp. Remember to hold the hair with a good amount of pressure and comb it to get all the hairs in that section. To verify your work, you want to stand behind the client and comb the hair. What I did for the sides is that I brought my fingers against the scalp and I brought them straight up and I just cut the extra hair, all right? So here, my fingers are touching the scalp, but up here, they're not, because I'm holding them straight up, all right? This is how I was holding my fingers. To verify the haircut, since we were cutting like this, you want to verify by cutting in the opposite direction like this and when you're verifying you're not trying to cut much you're just trying to bring the hair out and see whatever sticks out that's what you cut so this is what I'm talking about when you're verifying your work you bring the hair out Notice how right here, there's a couple little hairs sticking up, cutting those. That's what you cut, whatever sticks out. And you should always do this every time you're working with scissors. See how these hairs are sticking up? Now for the front, this is what we're going to do. We're going to comb the hair forward and using the edgers that are the same way that they came from the store, going to make sure the front is even. We're not going to cut it short, we're just going to make sure it's even. That's all. And when you comb it, see how it's even now? That's it. I'm going to teach you guys something that most barbers don't know how to do, but it's something very easy though. Um, he likes his hair spiky. 
and he likes it to look, you know, like this, um, not too full. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm going to take my comb, and with my scissors, go like this. I'm bringing the scissors at an angle, so it can cut the hair. And this is going to make the hair more spiky. A lot of barbers don't know how to do this process right here, but it's very, very easy. This is the comb that I use for this. So you want a comb like this for this type of job right here. Make sure that you're cutting with your scissors the hair that is over the comb. And make sure you're not going too deep with the scissors. You don't wanna injure the client. You don't wanna go into the scalp. You might mess up your tip if you do that. <laughs> so now I'm going to be using the thinning shears, the one that has 40 teeth. What the thinning shears do is that they help you blend the sides with the top better. Giving it a perfect blend. And the reason we didn't use the thinning shears for the top is because the way we just did it with the scissors, it comes out better when the client spikes it up. So now we're going to be doing the shape up. How long you want the sideburns? Right here? Yeah, that looks good. All right, notice how I'm pointing at the sideburns using a fine comb, because when you're using your finger to point it, it might create confusion to, for the client, because the client might think you're talking about down here or up here. So to omit all that confusion, it's better if you just use the comb to point at it. You want to use the ear as your guide. So if the client says he wants his sideburns right here, you know it's right here, this part of the ear, and you're using that as your guide. To remember for the other side. And we're using the corner of the blade for this part of the shape up. You don't do the shape up in the front, right? So for the sideburns, I'm gonna bring them up to here. Like I said, you wanna use the ear as your guide. So for the other side, we brought it up to here, and that's what we're gonna do on this side. For the back of the neck, I'm going to use the edgers that I keep the same way they come from the store. Meaning, I haven't messed with the blades, I haven't made them sharper. If you if you only have one set of edgers and those are adjusted to cut closer, just keep in mind when you're doing the back of the neck, you want to go really easy on the client so it doesn't cut the neck or leave them a red mark. How do you want the back square? Mm -hmm. oh, you head down a little more. If you have a second pair of edgers and you keep them the same way they come from the store, you can just do the back really quick and you don't have to worry about hurting the client because your edgers are so sharp. So now I'm going to be doing the gold tee. I'm going to loosen up the cape a little now bit. For the mustache, I'm going to use the edgers, the ones that I keep the same way they come from the store. The reason that I use these edges for the mustache and not the ones that are set up to cut closer is because the ones that are set up to cut closer might um, cut his lip by mistake. I've seen it happen to other barbers. When you're doing the beard, you want your client to be as comfortable as possible. So you wanna make sure you recline him. We're going to do a hot towel for him because his skin gets a little irritated if you don't use a hot towel. So let me show you guys how to do that. You want to wet the towel first. Take off the excess water. I like to put it in the microwave for a minute and 15 seconds. So we put on the towel like this. While that's going on, 
I'm going to put on the blade. You want to leave the towel on for about a minute or two. Now I'm going to add more shaving cream. I'm going to do the mustache first. How do you want the mustache? Right. By the way, this is how you hold the blade. The pinky here, the thumb here, three fingers here. And then you want to use a comb too to wipe off the excess shaving cream. Notice how I'm stretching the skin with the right hand as I'm shaving with the left. And notice how I'm standing on this side to do this side of the goatee. I'm going to flip the blade to the other side that I haven't used yet. And I'm going to apply more shaving cream because it's drying out. When shaving the neck, I recommend you guys go rather slow because a lot of clients' skin gets irritated when you're shaving the neck. When you're doing the goatee, you want to use the mustache as your guide where the mustache ends and just go straight down. Now I'm going to change the blade. Remember guys, you always want to work with a sharp blade. So it's okay to go through two, even three blades when you're shaving somebody. Especially when you're doing the inside of the goatee, you wanna make sure you're using a sharp blade. How do you want the inside? You want just a triangle and then the square? Yes. So now I'm going to make a triangle. Notice how I'm stretching the skin. Remember to have a black towel right next to you so you can clean your blade and your comb. Make these lines. I'm stretching the skin this way as I'm shaving towards me. I'm stretching the skin away from me. Don't be scared to stretch the client's skin. That's what it takes for you to make a perfect beard. You want to stand in front of the client and check your work. Make sure the line comes out straight. Especially when you're shaving going up, you want to make sure the shaving cream is not dry. You want to go against the grain with the hair on the face. Notice how I'm stretching the skin with these two fingers, with my right hand. You always want to double check your work. You want to stand in front of the client to check the sideburns. Make sure they're the same length. Like right here, I see that this sideburn on this side is a little bit longer. So I'm just gonna bring it up just a little bit. Shaving the client's neck makes the shape up last longer and your clients will really appreciate that. And it'll make your clients wanna come back to you. It's a great way to make new clients and keeping the clients that you have. Because a lot of barbers don't do this part um, just to save themselves like a minute. And it's not a good way to save time. Now, I'm going to use the aftershave. If you don't have one of these at the barbershop where you work at, I suggest that you use a blower. What the air does is that it takes away the sting from the aftershave. Okay. Finally, you want to apply um, a cream like this. This is a menthol banishing cream. And this just um, makes the skin feel refreshing. It feels good for the client. Also, you want to apply gel. Little steps like this, applying the gel, the menthol banishing cream after you shave them, all these steps makes the client feel better after the haircut, all right? It, um, 
it shows that you're a true professional. So here you have it guys, a fade with a number one on the sides and scissors on top. For more video tutorials, check us out at famemastervideos.com. And remember, practice makes perfect. So keep on cutting guys, peace. Hey, how you doing, uh, guys? I just wanted to let you know that I've been coming to Andrew for over 10 years. He's an excellent barber. I'm very happy with his service. I come here like twice a month and he never disappoints me. So uh, if all of you want to learn from the best, keep going to his videos on uh, fademastervideos.com and check him out.